Welcome back, everybody, to the Jacksonville Jaguars franchise here on Madden 21. Pretty busy episode today as we have our Week 16 game against the Chicago Bears. We also have a prospect profile, the final prospect profile for season number one. We're going to be going over linebackers and defensive backs. So without further ado, let's not waste any time and get this show on the road. We're going to be looking at linebackers first, and I think it makes the most sense to evaluate what we currently have at the linebacker positions. I like what we have with this group. Joe Schobert and Miles Jack have probably been the two most consistent players on this defense this year. Both of them are locked up to long-term contracts. Now, we could maybe use another linebacker. We do have Quincy Williams, who has been a fine starter this year. Quincy Williams has been really quiet the second half of the year after he was awesome the first half of the year. So his kind of minor regression throughout this season maybe makes me think that we do want to look at linebacker this year, whether we're looking to draft one early or for depth. This class fits both of those bills. There are plenty of good early round linebackers, and there are also multiple good depth players. So without further ado, let's start with Channing Allen out of the University of Texas. Allen is a projected top 10, maybe even top 5 draft pick in this year's class. I think he's a little bit raw, but if you develop him, he could be a really solid player. Allen is a power rusher, doesn't have a whole lot of speed and burst off the edge. I do worry about Allen's fit in some schemes, kind of like Jacksonville's. I don't think Channing Allen is meant for a 4-3 because he isn't really big and strong enough to be a defensive end, and he's not good enough in coverage. So I think he's at his best as a 3-4 edge rusher. Jacksonville does not run a 3-4. Their outside linebackers are not pass rushers. So I do kind of question the fit if Jacksonville were to get Channing Allen. Let's take a look at Westlake. Westlake has a lot of really good players in the linebackers and secondary, so we'll be looking at plenty of Westlake Hornets today, including inside linebacker Justin McGee, who has been super productive since his sophomore season. McGee is only 5'11", 218. The size isn't really there, but he's a productive athlete. The effort and motor is never questioned. He needs to be a smarter football player. However, the talent and the work ethic is there. Probably going to be a late second, early third round pick. So if Jacksonville wants to add another linebacker, I think they could certainly look at McGee. One of Justin McGee's teammates on this linebacking core of Westlake is Lewis Connie. Kanye is a generational prospect at the outside linebacker position, and he is the best player in this class, period. The Giants are projected to have the top pick in the draft. If they don't select Lewis Kahn, they are making a colossal mistake. Kanye is the best player in this class. I don't think it's particularly close. He has been super productive since his freshman season. He can get after the quarterback. He can stop the run. Kanye obviously is a freak athlete at 6'4", 258 pounds. He's built like a defensive end and runs a 4'3". Not to mention he's an extremely quick mover, excellent footwork, excellent uh, agility, quick hips. He flies all over the field. Whoever gets Lewis Kahn is getting a game changer on their defense for the next decade plus. The final linebacker we're going to be looking at today from the University of Hawaii is Taga Taluaipupu. Taluaipupu is not projected to be a high pick this year, probably going to be a fourth or fifth round selection. Kind of like Channing Allen, I don't think Taluaipupu is a great fit in Jacksonville's scheme. At 6 foot 240, he does not have the size and strength to be a defensive end at the next level. He's not great in coverage either, so I really question what he can do in a 4-3 scheme. And I think because of that, I think the fit in Jacksonville could be a problem. However, if we're in the 4th or 5th round and Talua Pupu is the best player on the board, Jacksonville would be wise to take him. I think he could be a really good player at the next level. Now we're going to look at corner. This is definitely a position Jacksonville will be addressing in the offseason. Their cornerback play this year was not good. CJ Henderson had a rough rookie year, but he is definitely a building block for the future. Other than Henderson, I don't think there are... A whole lot of other options in this roster so I definitely expect Jacksonville to draft a corner or two this year maybe even with one of their first round picks again a player they could target with one of their first round selections is Lamont Irving out of the University of Louisville Irving is probably going to go in the middle of the first round so I think Jacksonville could look at him with their second first round selection which they got in the Jalen Ramsey trade last season from the LA Rams Irving is the top ceiling for any corner in this draft. At 6'2", 191, he has great size and length, 
Really good athleticism, phenomenal ball skills as well. He is a problem in zone coverage. However, if he can improve that aspect of his game, I think he could be the best corner in this draft. His main competition for being the top corner this year is Zaire Wiggins from the University of Auburn. You may recognize his name if you watch the Westlake Dynasty. Zaire Wiggins is the younger brother of former Westlake wide receiver Nigel Wiggins. And just like Nigel, Zaire Wiggins here is extremely good at football. Wiggins is the total package as a cornerback prospect. Six foot, 185, phenomenal athleticism. He has blazing speed, an absolute ball hawk, 16 interceptions in his career, including eight as a sophomore. He does not rack up a lot of tackles, and while he's not a great tackler, that's not really his fault. As a junior and senior, quarterbacks just did not throw the ball his way, and whenever they did, it usually did not end up well for the opposing offense. I think if Jacksonville wants Wiggins, they're going to have to use their first 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 round selection on him. But from what I hear, I think the Jaguars really, really like Zaire Wiggins, and I think him and C.J. Henderson could be a really good duo. Another projected first-round corner is John Paul Patterson out of West Lake. Patterson is a very solid football player. He has phenomenal instincts. He is one of the smartest players in this draft. He does a great job of reading the opposing offenses. While he doesn't necessarily have the skill and pure talent of most first-rounders, Patterson is an excellent football player, extremely hard worker, and obviously, he is a very smart player. He knows how to read plays. And I think if you are getting a guy like Patterson in the later part of the first round, you're getting someone who's going to be a hard worker, someone who's going to be a leader on your defense. And I think he's going to have a phenomenal NFL career. The final corner we're going to look at is another player out of Westlake, redshirt sophomore Richard Richards. Yes, that is his name. <laughs> Richards played in the slot this past season for Westlake, and I think he'll be a really good slot corner at the next level. My only big problem with Richards is that I don't think he has the tools to be an outside corner. Richards only started one collegiate season, and he played every game in the slot, where yes, he was exceptional, but I don't think he has the size and quickness to potentially ever be a really good outside corner. Because of that, he's only projected to go in the fifth round. However, pure talent alone, this guy should be a day two selection. And I think Jacksonville will definitely look at him. Now let's take a look at the safeties in this year's class. And as we evaluate the safety position on this Jaguars team, I think they will look at safety in this offseason. Gerard Wilson is a serviceable player at best, and at strong safety, Ronnie Harrison's contract is up after next season, so I think this safety room could look very different in the near future. Luckily for Jacksonville, this is a strong safety class, and they have a great opportunity to add some young players in here. Let's start with one of the later round talents in this class out of UCF, Ike Shorts Raymond. I don't think Shorts Raymond will be off the board until the 6th or 7th round However, I think he's a lot better than his projection suggests. Even as a redshirt senior, Ike has only had one year as a starter for UCF where he has looked outstanding. However, at 5'10", 210, I don't think he is a phenomenal athlete at all. He plays slow and he's not a great coverage safety. I don't think he's meant to play three safety at the next level. I think he could be a good strong safety. I think he could be a good undersized box linebacker. I just don't see him as a three safety in the NFL. Let's take a look at the talented safety duo for Westlake. Three safety Marcus Lee and strong safety Marcus Jones. Yes, they have the same name and that can be confusing. Here is Marcus Lee, number 21, a very talented player. And the weird thing with Marcus Lee and Marcus Jones is that I think they've both been playing out of position. Marcus Lee has been playing three safety, but I think he has the tendencies of a strong safety. He's better in the run. He is not much of a ball hawk, whereas Marcus Jones is better in coverage. He forces more interceptions and more turnovers, but he doesn't make as many plays against the run. So, Although Marcus Jones was phenomenal at strong safety in college, Marcus Lee was phenomenal at three safety, I think their best bet is to swap positions once they reach the NFL because I think their strengths lie where they aren't really playing right now, which is weird, especially considering Lee and Jones have been so good in college, but I think in the NFL their weaknesses will be exposed. I think they may have to switch positions. Both Lee and Jones are projected to go in the first round. I think Marcus Jones will probably go a little bit higher, and I do think Jones is the better player. 
The final guy we're going to be looking at in this class is Rashawn Babineau from the University of Michigan. We saw what Jabril Peppers did at Michigan a few years ago, and Rashawn Babineau is a very similar player. At 6'4", 208, Babineau is the Swiss Army Knight in that defense. He plays safety, slot corner, uh, sub linebacker. He really does it all. He's a freak athlete, and I see some Jabril Peppers and some Isaiah Simmons in his game. Skill-wise, he reminds me a lot of Jabril Peppers, and how they're built, I see a lot of Isaiah Simmons. Babineau is a freak athlete at 6'4", 208. Simmons is 6'4", 238, so fairly similar. And I think Babineau is going to get picked a lot later than he should. Absolutely a first-round talent, and I think Jacksonville should select him. So that'll do it for the prospect profile. Now let's talk about the actual current Jacksonville Jaguars squad. Currently, Jacksonville is 5-9, a game back of the Texans in the division. Yes, this division has been a mess this season, but Jacksonville still has a shot. They're taking on MVP frontrunner, or at least one of the frontrunners, in Nick Foles and the 11-3 Chicago Bears. Obviously, Foles was a Jacksonville Jaguar last year. Things just went totally bad with the Foles and Jacksonville experiment. They traded him to Chicago. He won the QB battle over Mitchell Trubisky, and the Bears have not looked back. They've been one of the top teams in the NFC this season, and Nick Foles has been truly phenomenal. Foles has been known as a very inconsistent quarterback throughout his NFL career, but I think he's finally really putting the pieces together as a 31-year-old pro. Foles already has career highs in yards and touchdowns. He has thrown quite a few interceptions this season, which is why I think Cam Newton is ahead of him in the MVP race. However, I think this is the first time all year that Nick Foles is not first for MVP. And if he plays well against this Jacksonville defense, then I think he could repass Cam Newton for that top spot. The rest of his Bears team is really good. Pass rusher Khalil Mack is one of the most dominant players in football. And this is one of the better head-to-toe rosters in the NFL. The Bears have a very weird run game. Their starting running back this season has been Cordero Patterson. Uh, they've had David Montgomery as the backup, however, he is out today, so the main backup instead will be the shifty and elusive Tariq Cohen. I don't know why Cordell Patterson has been their starter at running back over Montgomery or Cohen, but oh well. So here we go, Week 16 action, the 11-3 Chicago Bears, who have already clinched a playoff spot. They are playing for seeding, taking on the 5-9 Jaguars. This is the final home game, at least for the regular season, at TIAA Bank Field before Jacksonville moves stadiums next season. Because of that, as you can see, the Jaguars are rocking some throwback jerseys today. And assuming the Jaguars don't make the playoffs, this will be the final game here at this stadium in team history. And it is kind of sad. This stadium is where the Jaguars have called home since they were an expansion franchise a quarter of a century ago. Hopefully Jacksonville can win their final regular season game here at this stadium. Third and six, Minshew up the middle, gain of 24 to his tight end, David Njoku, for a first down. Third and five now for Jacksonville, Minshew, under a little bit of pressure, he's going to scramble with it, going to get it to DJ Chark, who has been far and away the best player on this football team, he gains 19. Chark currently leads the NFL in receiving yards by a pretty big margin, and has certainly cemented himself as one of the top receivers in the game. Now from the 20, there's Leonard Fournette. Getting around 14 yards, bringing it to the 6. Now it's 3rd and goal at the 7. Minshew trying to get it to Chark. And instead it's picked off by Eddie Jackson. And Jackson will take it a long way. Tackled at around the 30 by Chris Thompson. Looked like it was going to be a touchdown for DJ Chark. But Jackson jumped the route and forced the turnover. Unfortunately for Chicago, Eddie Jackson got hurt at the end of the play. But still... Massive turnover, and the Bears will cap off their drive with a 23-yard touchdown from Cordell Patterson, and Chicago leads this one 7-0. Bears on the board first. They had a very dangerous offense. I didn't think a backfield of Nick Foles and Cordell Patterson would ever be considered dangerous, but here we are. Crazier things have happened in 2020, I guess, as Chark with a nice gain of 20. Third and inches now from the 42. Minshew going to look to throw it. He is under some pressure from the interior defensive lineman. Going to try to scramble and pass it, but he's actually going to be sacked by Khalil Mack. No first down for Jacksonville. Fourth and inches at the 43. The Jaguars are going to go for it. And Leonard Fournette only gains two, but that's more than enough as the Jaguars will keep the chains moving. Now from the 11, third and three. Minshew looking to throw it. 
Gonna scramble like he's late on a date. Gonna try to find Conley in the end zone. He runs into DJ Chark. Neither of them can come up with the football. So the Jaguars will be forced to kick a field goal. This is a chip shot. 28-yarder for Josh Lambeau. His kick is good right down the middle. And the Jaguars are finally on the board. It is now 7-3. Chicago with it from the 35 now. Foles looking to throw it. He is under pressure and is going to be sacked. The rookie, Caleb on Chisson. With the play, his second sack of the season. Obviously, it's been a rough rookie year for Jason. However, he has shown a lot of flashes here towards the end of the season. And I'm sure he will build upon that as a second-year player next season. Nice throw by Foles over to the slot receiver, Trey Quinn. Former Mr. Irrelevant by the Washington football team a few years ago. A few plays later, it's now second and six from the 32. Cordell Patterson gets around 12. Nick Foles, by the way, has not thrown an incompletion yet. Second and goal at the two. Bears trying to punch it in, and they would be successful. Touchdown for Cordell Patterson, his second score of the day. I'm sure Cordell Patterson fantasy owners are ecstatic right now as the Bears now lead it 14-3. little two-minute drill action for the offense as Minshew airs it out for Chris Conley. That's a gain of 28 yards and a Jacksonville first down. Now from the 20, second and 11. Minshew under some pressure, hit in the pocket, but he does connect with the rookie wideout LaVisca Chenault, who brings it to the six. Second and goal now from the nine, just over 30 seconds to play until halftime as Minshew gets it to Chris Thompson, who will be tackled into the end zone for a Jacksonville touchdown, and the Jaguars will once again make it a one-score game. That'll do it for the first half. Your score, Chicago 14, Jacksonville 10, as we go to the halftime report. It's been a very solid game of football so far. Jacksonville's offense does not look phenomenal today, but if they can pick it up in the second half, they can absolutely win this game. Chicago starts the second half on offense. There's Cordell Patterson with the handoff. He has been running all over this Jaguars defense as he brings it to the 24-yard line for a nice gain of about 18. Now from the 17, second and three, Nick Foles going to look to throw it. He will connect with Allen Robinson, who will find the end zone for the touchdown. A former Jaguar passing a touchdown to another former Jaguar. Allen Robinson spent his rookie contract as a member of the Jaguars before signing with the Bears a few seasons ago. Third and eight now for the Jags. Minshew is going to be sacked by the third-year linebacker out of Georgia. It's Roquan Smith, his fifth QB takedown of the season. The Bears have a chance to break this game wide open here on this possession. Third and eight, Foles going up the middle, and he gets it to Trey Quinn, who brings it to the 37-yard line. Good gain for Chicago as Quinn gets around 22. First down, very next play. Foles under pressure, and he is sacked again. Caleb on Chason with his second sack of the day. The first 14 games of this season, Chason only had one sack, and today alone, he has two. A career day for the rookie, third and 21. Foles under more pressure, nearly sacked again by Chase Son, and he is forced to throw it away, and that will lead to a punt, and Jacksonville will get the football back. Third and eight from the four. Yes, it was a very good punt by Chicago, as Minshew gets it to DJ Chark, who gained 11, bringing it to around the 15. Now from the 38, Jaguars are moving it pretty nicely, as Minshew going to scramble to his right, and his pass is picked off by Buster Screen, Trying to get it to Chenault on the curl route. That wasn't an awful throw. The Busker screen made a really nice play reading the throw. And now the Bears will get it back. Third and five, under 30 seconds to play in the quarter. Tough pass by Foles, and it will be incomplete. So Jacksonville gets it back. Minshew's previous pass was an interception. Going to try to avenge that. And he would be unsuccessful. Another interception. This time by Roquan Smith. And that'll be a pick six for the Bears. Minshew has now thrown three interceptions in this game. And none of them were awful throws. None of them were good throws. But I think it's more so the Bears defense making really, really good plays. And now it's a three-score game. Gardner Minshew has to pick it up. As on first down, starting the fourth quarter off, he gets it to Chris Thompson to the 39. Now from the 24, Jaguars trying to make this game closer. Third and nine. Gardner Minshew going to look to throw it. He's going to get it to his favorite target, DJ Shark, 
who brings it to around the six. Jacksonville is in striking distance. Now from the two. Second and goal. It's going to be a toss to the left side for Leonard Fournette. And he will find the end zone for a touchdown. And Jacksonville will make it a two-score game. It has not been a great day for Leonard Fournette, I will say. The Bears' defense, especially in the run game, has been phenomenal in this one. Jacksonville going to go for two. Quick throw for Njoku. And the pass is broken up by Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith has been all over the field today. He has been absolutely phenomenal. Third and seven now for the Bears. Under five minutes to go in the quarter as the screen pass is actually going to be caught by Patterson. He does lose three. The pressure was there by Taven Bryan. Bryan has had a quiet second half of this season after playing really well the first half. I wonder if Jacksonville will accept his fifth-year team option this offseason. So the Jaguars have it back and are trying to make it a one-score game. There's Chark pushed out of bounds at the 45 for a very nice game. DJ Chark once again with over 100 yards today as he continues to have an outstanding season. Third and one, there's David Njoku for a gain of 15. And a Jacksonville first down, nearing the two-minute warning now. Second and 10. Minshew under pressure, and he is going to be sacked by the big defensive tackle. It's Eddie Goldman who brings him down, and that'll bring us to the two-minute warning. It looks like Jacksonville's going to need a miraculous comeback. Third and 17, Minshew looking for Chark, and it is going to be broken up. So now it's down to this fourth and 17. This could decide this season for Jacksonville, hypothetically, and Minshew can't even throw it. He's going to be sacked by Robert Quinn, and now all the Bears have to do is choose some clock and end it. Second and seven, here's Cordell Patterson with the first down. He is clobbered by Ronnie Harrison, but it doesn't really matter. Jacksonville now out of timeouts, and a first down will officially ice it. Third and four, Foles under center. Two tight ends lined out to the left. Handoff for Patterson, and he will get another first down. And that'll end it. The Chicago Bears win it by a final score of 28-16. The Bears improve to 12-3, and, and Jacksonville, meanwhile, falls down to 5-10. Not a great performance, especially offensively today from Jacksonville. The defense held Foles in check. Nick Foles did not make any bad mistakes, but he didn't look like an MVP either. He just looked like a game manager, which, I mean, based on how Foles has been playing this season, that's a very uncharacteristic game of him. Gardner Minshew was not terrible. He did throw three interceptions, but other than that, I think he played fairly well. The run game never got going. Leonard Fournette only three yards of carry. And the strange thing is, this is the first time this season that Leonard Fournette has gotten at least 20 carries in a game, but he just didn't play all that well today. And it's not really his fault. The Bears' front seven was just absolutely insane. Cordell Patterson gets the game ball. He was phenomenal for Chicago. Uh, DJ Chark played very well. Six catches, 98 yards. Trey Quinn was the leading receiver for the Bears. Anthony Miller, only two catches for 16 yards. I think he leads the NFL in reception, so he was kind of quiet. Defensively, both teams were fairly good. Roquan Smith was all over the field. 11 tackles, one for a loss, a sack, and an interception. Two sacks for Caleb on Chase on. Definitely his best game as a pro. Very happy to see him starting to turn his rookie season around, and hopefully he will continue to improve next season and have him and Josh Allen be one of the top edge rushing duos in the National Football League. Or that's the goal, at least. So, now it's time to see how everybody else did. Do the Jaguars still have a shot to make the postseason? And unfortunately, the answer is no. Jacksonville has officially been eliminated. The Texans did lose, for what it's worth, but the Texans play the Titans in Week 17. Both of them are 6-9. and nine. Nice. So Jacksonville cannot possibly pass both of them, which means Jacksonville's chance at the playoffs is over. However, there is still a lot to play for in this Week 17 game against the Colts. I mean, for starters, both teams are 5-10, and 10, so this game will have a lot of implications for the upcoming NFL Draft, but I think it's also a really good opportunity to see some of the young players who haven't really touched the field a whole lot this season. I think we'll see a lot more snaps from guys like uh, Rodney Anderson, Colin Johnson, Shaq Quarterman, Daniel Thomas. A lot of young players haven't really gotten a shot yet for this Jaguars team. But I think this Week 17 game against the Colts is their opportunity. Hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm out. Peace.